call to order the um, meeting of the Danville Board of Education for April 20th. Uh, we'd like to welcome everyone who's here tonight. Uh, our first item on the agenda is to approve the meeting agenda. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda as submitted. I'll second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor of approving of the agenda as submitted say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next is uh, reports and presentations. Are there any comments from board members tonight? All right, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. I'd like for us to begin with a brief moment of silence. Today marks the 16th anniversary for the massacre of Columbine. Education changed forever from that day. Many of us remember it as parents, as students, or even as staff members in schools. We had to watch some of the most terrifying footage we've ever seen in regards to what it has meant for new realities in education. So if you would, just for a moment, let us reflect on the families that were so tragically touched and how much of our world has changed. Thank you. On a different note, there's no easy shifting of gears from something like that. Let's talk assessment. Um, this is, uh, in many cases, in schools assessment season. It comes in lots of different ways in Danville schools, from PBATs, gateways, and capstones, through our K prep work as well, ACTs, and of course exams, and even AP exams. I want to direct you to a new section of our website that's been developed to help explain a lot of the different things that occur in regards to assessment. It's on our screen to your left, your right, uh, my left. And you can see from the direction there under curriculum there's a new mark for assessment. And as you navigate through all the way down to the bottom of the assessment plan, you see on the far left, it will eventually kick up a list of the different grade levels, kindergarten, elementary, middle, and high. So if our families and staff ever wondered what the, the tests were being, or what they were, uh, which tests were occurring, the purpose behind them, the descriptions of them, this is the place that you will find them. So by grade level, uh, by uh, assessment area, you get a sense as to what they are, just as a way to help make this more clear. Testing is uh, an ever-evolving part of education and the more information that we can share and make it easier for folks to find, we think the better. And should you have any questions, of course, please email or call me as well as our assessment coordinator for the district, Dave McAfee. Uh, I am passing out to the board at the same time a calendar uh, that lays out differently than this, kind of all of it one, in one place. It says, here's what the middle's doing on this day, here's what the high school's doing on this day, here's what the elementary's doing on this day. We color code it just so you guys can see uh, that part of it. So I thought that might just help. And lastly, I know we've got a lot of folks here tonight, but we want to get to the recognitions. But I want to tell a story from one of our performance-based assessments at Bay Middle School. I think a lot of times we, we get into wondering the value of the work. And the value has great difference oftentimes in different arenas and different settings for different kids. And I was able to be part of the PBAT assessment for a student who admitted up front that he struggled mightily in issues of literacy. His performance-based assessment was in the area of science. It's a combination of science and math, heavily science dominant. And without having to then write an essay or read long passages to be able to struggle through multiple choice exams, this student could stand in front of a panel of adults and explain a concept related to molecules and their behavior based upon changes in temperature. In any other format, this student would not have been able to just show what he knew and was able to do. That is the whole point. The greatest purpose of our work in performance-based assessment is giving every student the opportunity to show what they know and are able to do. For many of us, it comes through traditional bubbling in sheets. We are gifted in that way and able to do so. For others of us, it takes different mechanisms and different styles and times and places for students to be able to demonstrate all that we are providing and the education they require here at the Danville Schools. It was a pretty proud moment superintendent and for Danville schools to see it in full effect and realize that this student would be on par with any other student having to describe and demonstrate his knowledge in that particular concept. So with that, uh, I, that will conclude my report for this evening. I'd like to turn it back for our celebrations. All right. Um, next is are the celebrations of excellence. Uh, who's going to lead us off? Mr. Rutherford? <coughs>
the high school has uh, two individuals and one team to recognize. And um, I've got a small script here to help me uh, make sure that I recognize all the accomplishments of our students. Uh, this year we have a student, Ruth Hughes. Um, is Ruth here? Let's see her. Okay, Ruth is not here, but nonetheless, I'm going to make sure that she gets the proper recognition. Uh, Ruth has proven herself to be a stellar student in so many ways at Danville High School. And most recently this year, Ruth applied, was interviewed, and accepted into the Gaff Academy of Mathematics and Science on the campus of Western Kentucky University. Uh, the mission of the Gaff Academy is to offer a residential program for bright, highly motivated Kentucky high school students who have demonstrated interest in pursuing advanced careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Only 60 students in the state of Kentucky are admitted to the academy based on their grades, their test scores, their answers to essays, recommendations, and interviews. We are proud to say that this year, or excuse me, next year, we will have a Danville Admiral as part of the 2015-16 GAC class. And so I want to offer my congratulations to you. The other individual recognition goes to C.J. McPherson. Uh, C.J., if you could come up and join me. Uh, C.J. has been a member of the Danville High School girls basketball team for seven years, and this year she will graduate from Danville High School, attend and play basketball at Lindsey Wilson College. Uh, C.J. has been honored this year by being named the 45th district all-district tournament team, uh, the all-district team. She was the KABC 12th Region Player of the Year. Uh, she was the MVP of the East All-Star Game and with a game high 33 points in that contest. And she was also named the Advocate Messenger Player of the Year. She received All-State Honorable Mention by the Lexington Herald Leader at the Louisville Courier Journal. And she was a finalist for the 2015 Miss Kentucky Basketball Award. We are very proud to honor CJ tonight at this board meeting. CJ. Mr. Meadows helped me out with the specifics and making sure that I did not leave any uh, one out or any recognitions. In March, the Danville High School uh, forensics team competed in the Kentucky High School Speech League State Tournament and placed second overall out of all high schools in the state of Kentucky. 26 Danville High School entries advanced through three preliminary rounds to the semifinals where top 18 contestants in the state in 13 events. Eight entries advanced on into the state finals. Zane Arnold and Matt Ballard were named state champions in improvisational duo, and seven more entries won top prizes. McCallum Morley was fourth in broadcasting. Lydia Graham was sixth in humorous interpretation, and sixth in program oral interpretation. Austin Berenger was second in poetry. Hannah Drought third in program oral interpretation. Laurel Payne second in prose. Grace Sheen, fourth in prose. Senior Laurel Payne was the high school winner of the State Tournament's Blighton Book Award, an award given to an outstanding senior who best represents the spirit and success of Dr. Gifford Blighton, the longtime coach of debate at the University of Kentucky. The week prior to the state, Danville High School won the Kentucky Contest and National Catholic Forensics League for the 19th year in a row. This contest advanced six in each of six speech and three debate events to compete at the Grand Nationals in Fort Lauderdale, Florida in May. Twelve of the Kentucky entries will be from Danville High School. Abigail Anderson, Hiba Siddiqui, Celeste Feeberg, McCallum Morley, St. Arnold, Mary Scott Bug, Greg Goldie, Sue Cook, Lydia Graham, Grace Sheen, Austin Berenger, and Laurel Payne. 
A week after state, Danville took top honors as a school at the Kentucky Contest of the National Speech and Debate Association, winning first in speech in Congress at the meeting. Mr. Meadows is the Kentucky chair of this organization and helps run the national tournament each year. Five EHS entries will advance on to Dallas, Texas, the third week in June to compete in the largest academic contest in the world, the National Speech and Debate Tournament. Those are Zane Arnold, Mary Scott Bug, Greg Goldie, Austin Barringer, and Lydia Graham. All 37 members of the Danville Forensics team were invited to be recognized tonight, and we are very proud of our speaking admirals. Again tonight, um, as when I first came to Bate Middle School, we talked about three areas, the arts, the academics, and athletics. And tonight we have two areas of recognition, and that would be athletics and academics. Uh, first of all, one of our students wasn't able to be here tonight, Morgan Salee. But he has been a fantastic representative for our school in the area of wrestling, which is fairly new to Danville. And he actually came in first in our district, third in our region, and sixth in the state in his 98 pound class of wrestling. So I have a certificate to give him tomorrow. But I wanted to let you all know that so we could give him a round of applause in his absence. <laughs> and we have an outstanding academic team also coached by Tony Carney and a um, also a future problem solving team. I'd like to ask Mr. Carney to come up and talk a little bit about them and their outstanding accomplishments this year. Then we'll do a group picture for those students and give them their certificates tomorrow. Come on up if you're here with Mr. Carney. Stand up here so you can be appreciated. I'll stand forward there and uh, everything low at this school. Face <laughs> <laughs> forward and smile at them. Um, this group, there's a lot of sixth graders up there. My sixth grade team this year placed second at their showcase and did a great job. And we rely on those sixth graders also as part of our district, region, and state team. Um, I don't have the exact numbers in my head, but I know a district, I think you could have added the score to the rest of the teams in our district and we still would have beat them. A region about the same. So we really pretty much dominated our district and our region. And we advanced on to state, and at state, several of these students have actually taken a step forward if you tested the state. I know we're not all here. So there's at least this many more students that should be here. But they all did quite well. They all advanced. Um, I'll single out a few of them just because they did so well. Sophie, just being a sixth grader, placed in the top 20. They only, only awarded the top 10, but that's pretty impressive for a sixth grader to be able to do that. And then Anas, if you'll take one more step forward. <laughs> Anas placed sixth in the state, which is a huge accomplishment in science. So he had some good science teachers somewhere. <laughs> He also advanced in mathematics. So, and go ahead, sis, you can step forward too. Okay? She didn't place that high, but she did advance the seventh grade of the state in science as well. Okay? So, and, and Sophie did two areas arts and humanities and language arts. Um, if I can step back in line with your peers now. So, we have certificates for each and every one of them. As a team, um, everybody up there is on the quick recall team. My future problem solving team didn't show for some reason. But they placed in the top 24. Um, we let ourselves get upset at the match. We were a little upset about that. But we did knock off North Oldham, which we were very excited to do. A very good school. And they actually placed fourth with getting no points that were recalled after being knocked off, which tells you that they were pretty tough. Um, we are going on to nationals. We've done so well this year. And we're hoping we can stay consistent and play the way we played against some of the top teams that we knocked off and hopefully come back with a national title is our goal. So when you step forward, I'm going to give you your certificate. And this one is for Sophie. And Grayson. Amal. 
Anas, Virginia, Katie, Julia, and Barrett. Now, before we all sit down and all that stuff, since in the spirit of the Danville Diploma skills, I'm going to step back and you're going to step forward and turn around to everybody who you are and tell them what you did at district, region, and state on your testing or what you did in group recall. I'll you first. Step over here. Take the mic. I am the captain of the Quick Recall team, so I led the Quick Recall team into district, region, and state. And uh, we managed to place first in district and region, but uh, we didn't do so good in state. But and um, I placed sixth in the state for science. At yeah, I placed sixth in state. Um, I placed first in district and second at regionals. Time to think about what did I do in my test? <laughs> <laughs> Very impromptu. Uh, my name's Amal, and um, I, was, I am a member of the Quick Recall team, and I started in some games in the district, um, regional, and state. And I tested in science, and I tested in science and language arts in district, and I got first. No, I mean not first. Um, I got fifth in language arts and fourth in science and then at regionals I got fourth in science and I didn't advance in language arts and then I advanced the state I didn't place in the state but yeah. Okay, <laughs> at first I started out just testing and then I went on to academic team and um, at showcase I tested in language arts and arts and humanities, and I got fourth in arts and humanities. My name is Julia, and I tested in language arts and arts and humanities this season. I did not place in regionals or state or district. And why while my teammates were playing with recall, I supported them through all the questions. Uh, my name is Emma Webb and I'm a member of the Quick Recall team and I did some testing as well. At district I um ew. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I tested uh, composition, which is writing, and science uh, for district and region. For district and science, I got a third place, and in composition, get <laughs> second, yeah, I got second in composition. Um, and then I went on to region, and in region, I did place, I got sixth place, and they gave me a
did Good Recall and, wait, hold on, yes, and testing, and I tested in arts and humanities in district and region, and in district I got four, and in region I got six, so I was, I almost made it. I'm a member of the uh, Bay Academic team as well as the Bay Composition team and I did not test this year but I was an alternate for the team of state. in the buzzers and <laughs> I um, placed first in arts and humanities in the region, um, uh, second, I mean first in district, second in region, and according to my sheet, 24th in state, so yeah. <laughs> Closing, I just wanted to say that in district, we're all here. We had six out of eight events. We were the champs in. And at region, we were five out of the eight. We were champs, and three others were runner up. So we had a pretty good season, as you can tell. And they did a great job. They had no idea I was going to put them the spots. <laughs> who are here tonight who are supporting kids and coaches and everyone else all year long. We want to thank them. All right, the board is going to trudge on in its business. Everyone's welcome to stay if you'd like, but if you get up and leave, we will not mind. <laughs>
our room to change screens because this one's so much nicer than what we had brought. some of the vocabulary we had on the existing building, reinterpreting in the new elevation. You know, we also have that new um, front entrance, or the new front entrance to the school at the administration, the administration uh, suite there. So, um, and, that, and then also over here, we've kind of done a little bit different interpretation because of the admin need some like different spacing of the window. So again, we're looking at that uh, curves, uh, a lot of glass here at the entrance. So again, when you're getting in that two-story space, that we've talked about it really becomes light filled. And, um, Brian, you want to start spinning around a little bit? And this is um, the north, uh, what would be the west side towards Harding over here. You can start to see, and this would be more of the back of house space where you can have deliveries, the kitchen, custodial, uh, what happened over there. And if you start spinning a little more, you start to see the media center and the cafeteria come into, into shape. And then also that back side of that two story atrium that we had. So again, a light filled space that's really going to be nice, light and airy. Um, getting a lot of glass along that north wall in both the cafeteria and the media center to really uh, throw a light back in that space and even looking at transom uh, windows in the media center to, to um, increase that ceiling height in that cafeteria and allow that natural light that you're going to get from that north facing glass to really penetrate into that uh, space and really make it light and airy. You know, we're starting to develop the idea of maybe looking at that rooftop area in terms of a green space up there in terms of like, getting people out on that side. So again, looking at kind of taking some of the elements from the old school and reinterpreting them into the new school. And you can also start to see that where we're extending that kind of that um, steps up into the uh, gymnasium kind of extruding that to the outside so it becomes on the outside now it becomes an outdoor seating area for the playground or for the green space that's out there and it could also you know, be doubled as a, uh, a teaching area too. That, so. Um, so the dotted lines below, I guess, is the ground. Yeah, you're seeing the basement down yes. below. You're seeing foundation. So yeah, we, we haven't put the plane in here. Still fairly rough model at this level of design, but you really start to see the details. You, you want to zoom in maybe yeah. on that. So we have clear glass here. These would what we call would be spandle, spandle glass, which was basically glass that's painted black on the back side, but you still get that reflectivity of glass looking at it and makes that a vertical um, part of it. Um, it just hides some of the uh, construction behind it. Again, we'll be using that on the front side also in those two-story pieces. So again, um, and again, look at a lot of glass, you can start to see there, you can start to see the bridge that goes across that front entrance through there. Um, you want to fly through the model? Tell me what you want me to do, I'll do it. Let's go around the front real quick again. 
kind of zoom in on this classroom link here so you can start to see some of that detailing a little bit more fresh. Um, but at a different angle, you can start to see the um, solar shades that we're going to put in. Those are kind of extensions, the idea is hopefully we can yeah, you start to see them. Does that help control light because that's south facing? And so those will extend out and help provide shade to those classrooms, but also provide reflectivity that okay. bounces light back up and gets that light deeper. So again, you cut know, out the direct light. Yeah, you get rid of the direct glare of the sun. Don't put it that way. Yeah, again, we get that side entrance over here for the FRC, and it'll have its own canopy. So we're starting to build some of that um, language. We're also looking at you know some of you know there's a limestone band that goes across that existing school, again, the idea of bringing the cross, and kind of bringing some of those elements and kind of knitting it together, but it's also saying it's it's new, but it, it also integrates very well, I think, with the addition, or the addition with the original building. We're still working on a little bit of what we're trying to do here. Um, again, we're trying to um, yeah, come around to the front. You, you know, on the front, you've got, they're kind of hidden right now because of the trees that are really growing up, but you've got these Collies pilasters out front on there and so we're kind of reinterpreting that because it's a solid mass so again kind of bringing some of the elements around really trying to tie the building together but at the same time making it different you know one of the ideas that we had you've got a stone base here maybe replicate some of that on that element and kind of help that step you know create that stepping from the old to the new so again like that um let's see if we can go into the model brian especially um Get some views. Yeah. You know, we talked about the media center, um, having a lot of glass looking over in that atrium space, again, making that communicative space. Also, the cafeteria, having maybe some sliding glass doors that you can open up for the special events to really make that atrium space part of that cafeteria space. So, again, so we're looking at that. So, before you go inside, yeah. on the exterior, I just love how you're taking pieces from the whole structure and kind of duplicating that in the game. Can you kind of explain that roof line to the entrance, though, because that seems so... It's... Yeah. Well, you're such... This is a great... I, I mean, I, I keep referring to this as a grand old lady, because it is. You know, that front entrance, you can't... I don't want to replicate it. I don't want to try to reinterpret that in a different manner, you know, whether it's a flat top. Or I think, you know, Ryan came up with this slightly curved, and, you know, it kind of gets that peak. It's, it's just a little different. I mean. We're open to suggestions. If you don't like it, we can definitely change it, but it's just something that we I want to throw out there. I have one opinion, especially knowing that Brian is sitting right here. <laughs> no, it, it, trust me. It, <laughs> you're not going to sit. Oh, you, you, I mean, you got to be at uh, crits in school. Yeah. We've had, I've seen, you know, take professors, yeah, <laughs> take kids down to tears, you know, just destroy us. So we're, you know, we're used to it, okay? <laughs> um, I, I like everything. I like the windows and the way they mimic the windows of the old lady. Um, I kind of like, I like it to be as traditional still as it can, but okay. like the twist. And the, that curve just doesn't look like something that would, would have been here okay. 50 oh, years yeah, ago. And okay. who knows what it will look like 100 years from now, you know? So, yeah, and that's but why we're I here. Don't know. The, the genesis behind it was you have to, you have to say that this is the entrance to the school. Yeah. And it's very hard to do that when you have this entrance to the school, which isn't going to be the main entrance anymore. Um, so, you know, we, you know, Eric and I sketched quite a few options, you know, trying to look at a, a modern pediment, you know, using that form of flat roof and uh, or a square box. And it just didn't, they all kind of fall flat. I mean, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to do. Um, you know, I, I kind of came to this idea because it kind of, um, I guess it kind of, I guess it's kind of saying to us in terms of it's, you know, it's kind of soaring, um, it has a purpose, it's, you know, we're, we're looking at, um, I guess maybe a, a modern interpretation of a grand entry, but, and we can come back with different ideas, it's just, you know, it's just, that's why we're here, we're, we're bringing it to you and we'll try to get in front of you as often as we can if you want us to come back next month and explore this you know this is this this is just a detail at this point yeah, but I, I, I want to you know I want to hear from I know it's a, we're throwing a lot at you every time we come here but it's just there's a lot to 
be putting in front of you every time we meet. So. But I mean, I hate to sound like I'm thinking more negative. No, I think it no. all. Is, I think it's fantastic. I can't imagine what it will be like to be in that space and just have all that light coming in. And, I mean, our scores are going to have to go way, way up. <laughs> get to eat lunch in some place like that. So I think I think it's fantastic. Can you do a section like kind of looking across that way and kind of looking? You're gonna have to do that, Ryan. He's asking. He's asking that. I mean, this is what's great about the, this that. new software is that we can <laughs> on the fly this turn right. this, cut sections. Say, hey, you want to see something a little bit different? Whereas before we'd come with like with these boards and they'd be fixed. And well, if you don't see what we wanted, you want to see, then we'd have to come back next week. You know, with this. What's the name of the program? This is called Revit. Revit. Yeah, it's by Autodesk. It's pretty much an industry standard. I'd say 75% of the firms use this. Uh, what's great about this is also our engineers, our mechanical engineers, are also using and the structure. same platform and structure. Okay. So we build this. In the high same software across the field. Okay. Oh, that is cool. So we build the architectural model. They start putting in their information. You know, the duct sizes. They're, you know, a true duct will be in there. A mechanical unit will be in there. So the structure will also be built on top of all that model. The, the roof trusses, all that, so we can really look at a lot of things throughout the thing versus just having to draw on. Trying to get to the main corridor. Oh, I was thinking. So I was thinking this way, way, but you can do anyway. Yeah, we're slicing. It's kind of almost a dissection of the building. So. So there's the bridge as it comes across. Well, okay, yeah, kind of. With the main entry. Yeah, that's looking. You're in the atrium, kind of a little bit high, but you're looking back out through that front entrance. So then, you know, there's the bridge, there's the front door. You know, we're trying to have glass. As you, you know, if you cross that bridge, you can be able to look out to the street. You can also look out towards that green, a little bit to that green space out on the north side of the building. So you want one the other way? Yes. Well, it'd be nice to look kind of back at the media center and the cafeteria a little bit. I know the gotcha. front entrance won't be as grand, but it kind of gives the idea. The idea of looking down through here, you know, we're, we're trying to develop some display cases in that entrance space, and one of those display cases, what I like to use is what they call an all-glass entrance system. So you, you see this at the mall, so it's just a metal bar at the top and at the bottom, but otherwise it's a a thick piece of glass, so you look in there, there's no mullions in there, and so the idea is that's a, a display case in terms of tackable surface, but also has the standard, so you can put shelves in there, and switch it out constantly. What's nice about those all glass systems is they're all pivots, and they open up a lot nicer than the old sliding glass doors that are rickety, and you always feel like it's going to break on you, so it's nice about that. That'll be in the entrance, but you can also start looking at the idea of, you know, these are a folding, folding, or sliding glass doors that can open, you know, it'll be shut most of the time and kids will enter through here and this will probably put a little more glass on that. But the idea is if during special events, whether you're using the basketball or even like tonight, you could be in there and you can open up that glass and it really now becomes an extension of the cafeteria and the atrium. And likewise upstairs, we're looking at how to develop that glass and the media center to kind of look down on that space also and whether we have windows that are operable or doors that are operable to open up that space to one another. You know, you can maybe have a, 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 um, a speaker up top or something like that or just have fun with it. You know, that's, that's the thing about this. You know, it's, we want to have kids want to have fun with it. This is where I'm fun developing the, the plans. I know we would probably want to come back and at the steering committee level and, and discuss some of this after we get uh, this approved today and kind of look at some of the programming places where we maybe need to make some slight adjustments to the plan and just how it really works on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, with you know with a lot of the staff and now that they've really now the places the, the rooms are starting to really gel together. So this is the meeting center. Oh, that's the, okay. He's now. He's inside the media center, so this is like standing right at the doorway from the media center. So this is the atrium you're seeing here. That's the back wall with those transoms windows facing north, so we're trying to get all, a lot of that daylight. You know, we might be looking at stepping the ceiling in order to help create spaces within the media center. We slope the roof. 
as of now. A slope proof. So you know whether that ceiling sloped or stepped. You know that's something that we're going to be starting to develop here in the next design development phase. So you'll see a lot more details coming from us as we move forward. So have the roof, roof slope to try to pull that light back into the space. I know I need to get my interiors involved. Also come back and maybe have another round of. Uh, user group meetings and really to see how okay as the problem progresses did we hear what they you know what we heard a month or two ago when we had those user groups is it still reinforcing now that they had time to think about it too we want to you know, again get a lot of user input on this because it's you know, they know best how they want to teach and how it integrates into the follower thinking so Dan Bill so. Steve questions Kate Lonnie Susan, Paige, I know we're throwing a lot at you. No, Catching it's, really, up. it's just really fun to be able to see, see it this way and be able to get inside. Yeah, we're still debating, you know, color-wise and material-wise what we're putting out here, but I think it wants to be a masonry material. We might look at, you know, at the stairwells, maybe putting some metal panels, especially up on the higher roof areas, putting metal panels to keep light or weight down so I don't have to transfer uh, masonry weight all the way down to the ground floor is trying to be economical with the structure to, in order to allow us to do other things inside. Can you show where the outdoor classroom space might be? Um, well, the rooftop, go back up. Yeah, we're, we're trying to plan for a, you know, we're trying to set this up. And we're going to, the next step is to look at structure. You know, we, you can see a little canopy here. So that's coming off the corridor. So if we can do this, the idea is create, you know, like an 800 to under a thousand square foot space because of code and be able to keep doors swinging out and not swinging in. Um, so be able to run cafeteria and so on. Well, yeah, and that, cat, that kind of will be over the serving area and the wear washing. So, and then back here will be more of the, the stack. And we'll try to, the idea is also to put a screen wall there to help block that view of the sound. But the idea is, you know, maybe a door coming off the side of the media center. When you look at the plan, I got a little note that girl hallway that goes out there it could be a, a learning center space or it could be that hallway out to that community space. So again, having access from the media center for people to go out there and read and it's kind of set up that way. Or, yeah, you know, great. Here the idea, zoom out, the idea is you enter here. We're thinking maybe the circulation desk back here helps control a lot of that, kind of get it back into the space and be more centered versus putting it right up front. But then having this as our access out there, this is what we're thinking is the TV studio radio studio for the kids and the AV kind of mini computer lab space workroom here and AV storage there because they can have access off the corridor teachers can come and get AV equipment without having to go through the media center so again we got to work a lot of these details out but it's the big picture of the organization the relationships that we're really trying to establish here Where you were showing those um, on the outside of the gym, where you were talking about that seating area, yeah, right. kind of how that transitions into the. I think it may just be because we're seeing that underground view. Yeah, it's yeah, a little yeah. confusing to me, but yeah, show me how that translates into that atrium space. How it. So the one thing that we need to do from the last week is try to develop maybe a ramp over here and see how that works. But the idea is, you know, two steps up here, a little platform. And it's just, since it's only about a two foot difference that we're doing, it's only about four steps. So the idea is, you know, this is internal, that's external, external, but we, you know, because of fire separation, we've had to build a little bit of a solid wall here, so it's gonna probably block it, but at least, you know, clean up things. But the idea is that the look of that is continuing through, hopefully you see the steps as they continue through. So that would just keep on the same level? Yes. 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 As this and this outside. are all on the same plane right now. That's our thinking. Okay. And then that way out here is just to set up an outdoor seating area if kids want to sit down during recess or stuff like that. I think you were out there the right. other week and well, a lot of kids are sitting on these stoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And you, you know, it's still at, you still allow access to that door and this door it yeah. provides, you know, it's not just for looks, it also right. provides the access, but at the same time it can be a functional. So where's the handicap access? Well, right now what we have it going on is there's a ramp here that gets you up and around this way. I think 
we're just one of the, yeah. the look at maybe providing a ramp here okay. to get in here, which is have to look on with, with those so doors swinging both and ways. And you need also need a lot of room. Yeah, it's, well, it's tight. because we're keeping it at 24 inches vertical okay. height, we need a 24 inch that's length that's not too ramp. Long. It's not too long. No. Once you get above 30, I got to have a landing. So it's basically you get, for every inch rise, you have to have a foot run. run. So we want to we're trying to balance it, not having this big long ramp in these spaces. You know, we got still trying to keep those ceremonial stairs kind of coming down. This is what I was talking about—that plinth that'll be more higher, so it could be a display case and kind of help separate that those areas. You know, what I don't like is seeing those eight-inch walls separating spaces. It just don't seem like they're hefty enough. I want to use it as a display case. I want to, you know. Try to take some of these things. There's a good view looking back. You know, those will be and a hold open. Right now? We're okay. We're just here's the atrium like the one across. There's so we're back. Steps that we were just looking at, and this is the ramp and the stairs. Yeah, these doors will be on hold open, so they'll be open most of the time. You know, this to, is the main entrance. Is yeah, you're looking. The, the main entrance. Well, actually, the main entrance is oh, over coming over here. here. Yeah, your basically cafeteria entrance is right. You're going back yeah. to the old, that hallway is going back to, back to the, the old. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, you want to move forward and then we can spin around kind of that, what we call a node. <laughs> For lack of a better term. So there's the doors to the gym. There's that atrium space looking out towards the green space. You know, over here is the entrance in the cafeteria. We'll put a little more glass I'll get there. there. Hang on. Okay, we'll get there. Okay, there. <laughs> you know, there's those folding doors to the cafeteria, but this will be probably the main entrance because as you come in, your natural instinct is to probably want to go on that angle. Same thing with upstairs at the media center. We've got those entrances. Can you have glass on the gym wall? No, uh, no. Uh, because that's, fire that's, that's, a, okay. that's our fire separation okay. for yeah. code. Can you swing back to where you were just a second ago, right there, looking at that entrance to the cafeteria? Yeah. Is there, is there, can you swing back just a little bit more looking out towards the um, gym? Mm -hmm. Okay. I like, I really like the way that those folded glass doors open up and it makes that gym, the, the cafeteria space seem very open and all the rest. What we're right lacking there. are windows. We're going to put windows. Is that what? On that side too? Yes. Yeah. Because it just starts to feel kind of closed right. off. Yes, yeah. and we want to. And the, the doorway to me looks a little bit small compared to well, we need if it's going to be the main entrance and all the rest mm -hmm. to be able to just see in and project yeah. that kind of airy. You know, we could use kind of a transom or, you know, the other idea is um, what I call super graphics. You know, the idea of like a cafeteria or Danville or Tom right. or, you know, something nice because as you enter, that's going to be. Right there. And are those actual doors or are those glass? Yeah, these will be more wood doors, probably about to have glass in them so you can see through. I don't want to close off and blanket. You can't do a solid glass? Mm, not, probably for code. Yeah. Not for code, but also that you see here. I'm thinking hands. Of that. hand, fingerprints, there you go. Okay. Steve must yeah. not be the one in his house. <laughs> I don't have any fingerprints. <laughs> Um, the, an element that I could see in the exterior of the old building, and I'm sure there's a more technical term, but some kind of arch maybe on the windows, is there any way we can incorporate that into that area where we're going to add some more glass? Is that kind of... Well, maybe the place to start looking at, instead of having that square, right. maybe having right. that arch, that glass arch with the roof, because there are a few windows well, yeah, so that, that are arched. I'd be really interested if it's not, you know, hours and hours of work. No. To see that in new entryway arch that has you know just a kind of traditional arch to it instead of the half arch. Maybe more of a full. I mean, that, maybe a full more full barrel vault mm -hmm. sort of look. We could look at that and bring that back. Yeah. To I, mean, you. I feel a little uncomfortable seeing that when you know. No, but. Do you, do you oh, are you What's that? I see what you're saying. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do like that. No, we could definitely bring that back. You know, we'll, um, we're not done any, by any means designing this building. Design is going to happen all the way through. Okay. So that's, that's just the, because it's built doesn't mean it's done. Yeah, just that's <laughs> it. It looks like it's finished and ready to go to bid. This is we're, yeah, we're, this yeah. Is, okay. 
that's the that's the bad thing about Reddit. Is it makes it look things so great and Reddit get filled of course. But funny. Can you zoom in a little bit right there on what's the right hand side of that picture where there's the wall with the three uh, vertical lines and then the stair okay. So that's the old building. Here. New construction starts right there with the glass. Yeah. That's all okay, what's behind there? Behind there, this is our restrooms. Okay. So the idea was on at least on the second and, or first and second floor. Um, there are areas of refuge, so we don't want to put glass in them. Right. Because once I put glass in them, they really don't, without a lot of additional cost. Right. No, I think that makes perfect sense. So that's so that part of the building we're seeing there is kind of the part that is common with the lines of the old building. Correct. Yeah. I'm, you know, but I'm bringing around this that that idea of that um, limestone line work across around right. here. You know, we need to develop this a little bit further because on the front side you've got like urns that pop up there. So we want to look at that. The other thing is maybe help breaking up the scale by putting in a stone base here to kind of help shrink it and give a base to it. So. Is there any way you can go in on that cross section and kind of put us on that bridge, kind of looking at that atrium from the second level? Okay, I think so. <laughs> Get us there. Yep. Go. Oh, right. It's not that hard. Yeah. So again, there's the entrance to the media center again. The idea of Maybe super graphics, you know, media center. I mean, when I'm talking super graphics, I mean big stuff or different things like that. Or there's the murals that we can do. Um, Cost to a change in material. Yeah, and you know, you know and making more glass on here. Maybe you know, a storefront with slide lights to really make it open. That's what we want to do there. You know, then looking down the corridor, we're starting to set up for putting lockers on that. What I think will be the fifth grade classroom. You know, that, that's a nice way to do that. And that way we can incorporate lockers into that. You can start to see the overlook onto the front of the building. So that's a nice big space on that bridge. It's not tiny. Um, we'll look at how decorative we can get those. You know, that railing will be 42 inches high per code. It's, this won't be the railing that you end up with. Probably, you know, we, we can look at raising that up a little bit, but you know, you get too tall and it doesn't feel right. You know? And what are you thinking about? It sounds like you're still thinking about some options for what that window space is called the media center right yeah, there. Yeah, it's right there. It's just sort of a placeholder. Yeah. Are you going to talk at some point about it almost being like a balcony perhaps? Or That's balcony? kind of one idea, maybe having some doors in there that open up. And you know, with these big glass, I don't think I could put that railing across. Right. Because the doors are going to open in. So it's something that we want to look at and develop a little further. If it's something that you guys think you could use in terms of having a little bit of balconets oh, looking into that space. That's Something that we look at or if you want to look, have it more just glass in and be able to look down on that space and this bridge to the kind of the overlook. So, right. I know there's a noise issue between the, you know, you know, trying to open it up and how often would you open it up. We probably also have some, some glazing on this side. Yeah, you definitely some more glazing along that. Are there any safety concerns about the bridge in the elementary school? It's just not an issue. You're still making a ladder, so they can't, so they can't climb it. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of rail options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like nice. Oh, I know you're joking. You mean no? Don't I mean make it just across, right. You yeah. just don't. You, you make it vertical. Yeah. You're the only horizontal you kind of put is at the bottom, so that, you know maybe just six inches off. So what we don't want to do is horizontal, like you, right. Ryan said, it creates yeah. a ladder in the overall. Right. But you know, well, like I said, 42 inches is probably what you would normally see in um, commercial structures everywhere else. It's, you know, we build it to code. There was a bridge at Lincoln, right? Can we go over a bridge? Yeah, at Lincoln, yeah, you walked out and that was at 42 inches also. So 42 is not short. No. So Eric, tonight you need us to basically kind of the schematic, the schematic like the way the layout is right now. Yeah, the relationship of the rooms, what rooms we have, you know, the renovation part of how we reorganize the rooms, kind of where we are at today with the elevation. That sounds like 
I'm here and it's pretty much a go with you know some tweaks here and there. That's I expect that at every stage, in every meeting that we come to present this stuff to you to keep you informed. And as far as things like that we talked about last Monday, that it will, for example, flow the administrative space or whatever else. Those are details that will get worked out with user groups and yeah. other things as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Just acknowledging that we know that that space is kind of divided, old and new, and kind of portioned out the way you guys have it. Is that right? Right. And, you know, I brought you know the, the idea here again is the administration, you know, small admins we've got here that has uh, principals, uh, conference room, first aid. Uh, workroom and then upstairs on the second floor having a remote or guidance counselor maybe the assistant principal again the idea of spreading administration throughout the building so for observation it's a quick response but, but even by approving what we approved tonight I mean if there's some tweaks that have oh, yeah 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 we'll be moving walls right. yeah. yeah we're not in any way locking walls down right. we're just trying to stay, understand schematic is very loose in terms of where things are you know we're talking about square footages talking about the relationships your overall form of building. Right. So in this schematic, where are we in terms of square footage and just whether we, I mean, are we still at that? We're probably a little more square footage right now where we probably ought to be in terms of, of the budget. You know, um, that's what I want to come back to the steering committee and look at some of the programming items that we had. I mean, it was a, kind of a wish list now that's putting things on paper, understanding sizes and relationships. I know, we've come, I know we've come down since the first number, yeah. just because we work, reorganized that classroom around and got it yeah. I mean, But then at the same time, it's the money that's going to require for you know, the renovation. We don't want to steal from it necessarily. We, we, we want to bring this whole building up right. together or not. I want to make this special, right. but I think we also still need to consider this is where the students are going to be most of the day. So as far as that square footage number, like how um, I mean, how much are we kind of, what's the mark? Probably about 3,000 square feet over, and that's, again, we can work with the budget, you know, how, how we simplify things, you know, trying to keep that structure very simple, not trying to do what I call construction gymnastics, trying to expand, you know, having a beam or column to voice cannily over 30, 40 feet over you know, space itself, so, or even 60 feet. So what you're saying is we can still go over 3,000, we just need to keep that. We need to so look at, you know, yeah, or, you know, one of the areas that I'm having a tough time with is the staff dining, trying to fit it in within all the other stuff that we're trying to do in the kitchen. You know, look at that as, you know, kind of reprioritize some of the program spaces. You know, I definitely want to keep all the academic things in there, but some of those other secondary program spaces that we really need it, we'll work it in, we'll try it, and we'll look at the budget that way. Um, we need to do probably another round of estimates as we get into DD, get a lot of finer details right now. We're not, we don't have structure in here in terms of the sizes and the joists and the and looking at all that. You know, what mechanical guide is working again. We're at a, it's more of a square foot number. You know, where we budget $100 a square foot for existing renovation and $200 for the new addition, you know, also site work's gonna enter in that. You know, are those teacher work rooms big enough that teachers can go into those and have lunch up there? But yeah, and again, we've got teacher work room one on each floor, so we want to look at that. I mean, again, look at how this building is going to be programmed. How are we going to use it on a daily basis in terms of, you know, okay, what teachers, not necessarily put a name of a teacher, but okay, yeah, fifth grade year, how it kind of floats and works throughout the day. You know, uh, one thing, this is just my own uh, perspective on this. So, uh, for that outdoor rooftop classroom, yes. Um, at what point will that be something that kind of gets drawn in here and is on the plan? Because at the point at which we show this to yeah. parents and the public and all the rest, I would really like for that to be yeah, there. We can develop this a little more right now. It's a dash line, but maybe we need to develop this a little more. I would like for people to be able to see that. Okay. Because I kind of feel like if that's one thing that even if we decide at some point that the budget is getting to be an issue and all the rest, I think that that's like a feature that we could even try to fundraise for and do something. But I think that if people can see that there, yeah. they don't really want it there. I think so at the very least, we structurally designed it to support it. Right. I would like for you guys to draw it in Okay, there sure. We'll put the wall really in and we'll start labeling that. Really good okay. and, and uh, exciting. And then we come back, um, make a few tweaks and we'll we can give you something to help 
maybe you can start thinking about it. You don't have to put a palm tree out there, but I would object to the planner or something. Yeah. Okay, I'll have my landscape guide or internal landscape architect design on the same sort of thing. You know, benches and maybe some planners and stuff like that to show them. Yeah. Okay, good suggestion. Are there any more questions? Okay. What, so after the schematic design, what is what do you call the next phase? Design development. Or okay. then we refer to it DD. So right. by slip it's to start calling DDs so you know what we're talking about. So again, that's where we really start putting a lot of details into the building. I right. work out a lot of the issues. I mean in the next phase. And that's that's around July 4th is when we'll come back for that approval. And then the next phase after that is build construction documents where we really start putting the construction details. Okay. And you know, roof parapets and four floor connections and window details in. Mm -hmm. And that'll be closer to Halloween when we come back to that approval. Because we're trying to again, the schedule is I'm using the major holidays as kind of landmarks because you know we want to be out to bid right before Thanksgiving and receive right. bids right before Christmas. Again, because of the uh, bond sale that we need to do um, in mid January and all the requirements of KDE, HBC, board meetings that need to happen between now and the business. So you think it can happen quickly at this red date? Okay. Does anybody else have questions for Eric? I guess we can hustle back to our safety yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Can you close out? Yeah, close out so they can switch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Okay, so we have a, in the materials we have a recommended motion um, for this schematic design. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve of the schematic design for the elementary design project. Is there a second? A motion and a second. Are there any more any more discussion or questions on that? All, right, all in favor of the motion to state say aye. Aye. All opposed? Right, motion carries. Thanks, Eric. Again, we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. The next item on the agenda is the Hogshead Library Roof and HVAC BG1. Is there a motion? I move that we uh, accept the HVAC BG1 emergency uh, roof uh, fix, uh, repair. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. So this is for approval of the BG1, which will be an emergency BG1. Um, and we'll explain that. Well, it just we, we need to make it an emergency because we need to get moving on it. And that terminology helps us with KDE when we're moving the BG1 forward. They uh, they expedite a little bit quicker if it's an emergency. And obviously, in a roof situation, we can always get. I would call that an emergency because we've got leaks going on there. So it will just help us speed the process up. To get number one to get it fixed quicker, and number two to have the funds spent by. Uh, a deadline that we have to get on June 30th. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Um, and that's a really quick question. Are there some leaks in the high school? It said there were buckets there. They're into the rain. Are we having issues? We, or is we that have a, we have an issue. We have one issue in the new pep center area that we're that Ken Arrington from Trinco is going to look at. So I mean, we've had obviously a lot of rain. So those tend to. Um, they, they tend to uh, make very visible all the issues that we have. So that's that's one area that I know about. Uh, we've had some problems with back hallways and, and the bus area. So we'll have Ken Aaron to come out and look at all those issues. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have a motion and a second on the BG1 for the Hogs at Library Reef and HBAC project. Is uh, all in favor of the motion to state say aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. Next is the tennis court resurfacing BG1. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the uh, BG1 on the tennis court resurfacing as submitted. For a second. I have a motion in the second. Uh, this is just a, I mean, it's, it's normal maintenance. It just happens to be on these kind of things, you like to do them for a lot of years. So this happens to be a time where getting a lot of issues with the courts with cracks uh, and that's the main problem is we're getting a lot of surface cracks on the playing areas and it just makes them unplayable so um, something we need to do for 
couple of years now. It's just it's time to have that done, and this hopefully will get us through uh, the next decade and beyond. Uh, and this will be a total. We'll be milling up the surface that we have and more new asphalt, and uh, all the striping will be done in that number. Did you also say the fencing and all that would be the new, new fencing, which has been up and it's kind of beat down and bent. It's hard to restore that if you're going to have new courts. It, it would really start to look uh, like it was in bad repair if we didn't fix that. So that number includes all that. We won't. Our, our guys won't have to do any anything on the courts after they're fixed. They'll be completely done in that number. We might have to have. Uh, I've been in contact with KDE today. I think that this is fairly routine, but they may require us to have some architectural help with specs. So it, it, what happens is the company that, write, that writes the specs, if they write them for us, they can't bid. So we'll have to remove them from the, from the process because it's probably a company that we would like to bid on. And obviously we'll be following all the bid laws, but that company that, that has helped uh, advise us and has done some work for us like on our track we'd like for that company to be able to bid so we may have to get eric uh, and ross tarrant to help us with some architecture so that with the architecture fee or some fee may be in on that number as well which could drive up cost a little bit when you looked at the courts and you're thinking about everything that has to do with the courts have you had any discussions at all about the viewing area do you know what I mean? Like that's there's not really anywhere to sit unless you're just. I think that that's something that I think we can look at. I mean, I don't obviously expect, that's. I don't not, want to put any more money into it. I just wondered if it came up at all when you guys were looking at them. Just this well, I think that's. Of, I, I think I, I don't know if it came up, but I mean, I think all of us recognize that it's not a. It's, you mean you basically bring your towel out and sit, and right? Watch tennis, and it's, so if we want to look at that, there's probably some relatively cheap ways to create some sitting area in that it would require us to move slopes some. down you know almost like some kind of natural like, yeah seating. i think there's there? probably some things we could look at doing there that might not be that expensive even if it's just to you know move some dirt and carve out some yeah. kind of amp natural amphitheater type seating yeah we could yeah. probably do something relatively inexpensive and you don't i mean you don't have to have a lot of that there's I mean, there's, our tennis matches are uh, well attended by parents, but you usually don't have a, a, a whole lot of people at those, so you can probably do something pretty cheap. Right. Okay, thanks. Okay. We're going to have a motion and a second on the tennis court resurfacing. Uh, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next is the track resurfacing, BG1. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion for the approval of the BG1 document for the track resurfacing project as submitted. There's a second? A second. All right, we have a motion and a second on the track resurfacing project. And again, that's an asphalt. It's the same thing with the tennis courts. Um, it, it, they just have to coincide with the timing of them. We've got deterioration of both areas, so that's the reason you're getting both those at the same time. Um, the track's probably 15, 12 to 15 years old, and we have a rubberized surface in there, and it starts to you know, over, with their weather condition, that rubberized surface starts to deteriorate um, and creates cracks. So we'll be removing the rubber, rubberized surface out of the rubberized material out of the track and then uh, fixing cracks, pouring an inch and a half asphalt back over it and then adding the rubberized surface back to it. We do a very good job, our maintenance guys, Danny, and the guys do a good job of keeping people off that track. And if you let teams with cleats and stuff on the track, it can really add to the wear and tear so it's something we really try to maintain our guys do a good job of trying to uh, we put down mats you know when teams are walking over the track to get onto the field for soccer and football not so much soccer anymore because we play it up on the hill but football teams are not walking out there on that surface with cleats because we've got rubberized mats in them but um, so when we get the new surface we'll even be more vigilant about protecting that new surface Okay. Any questions on the track resurfacing? I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next is the audit contract. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve of the 2015 Second. Second. Right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, this is the same farm style as Carter that we had last year. So they're offering to do 
updated services, go back to services for the same cost of recommending that firm. Any questions? All right, we have a motion on the audit contract. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Next is the capital funds request. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve of the capital funds request for the 2014-15 school year SEP. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Campbell? This form is a bit redundant from the items that you all just approved, but it is required because we'll be using capital outlay funds and building funds for the projects of the tennis courts, the trap, and the roof. So this form is the request to use those funds for those items. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second on the capital funds request. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next is the finance report. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we approve that the financial report has submitted. A second. All right, a motion and a second, Ms. Campbell. Yes, I just have a few comments that I want to make. Um, in reference to our uh, tax collection for this year, we currently have 245 bills that are outstanding, and that represents about 4% of the, our total um, tax properties. We have about 6,000 um, taxing parcels. And the dollar value associated with that is about 105,000, which represents only 1.5% of the taxable, the collective, collectible tax dollars. So um, Wednesday, names will go on the website, the unpaid bills, and then next week, names will be printed in the newspaper. So we have had a lot of payments come in on this yet today. Um, just a couple of other items in relation to some invoices. We have had significant savings on our fuel costs this year, just like we've all had, had at home. Um, so next almost to the end of the year. I'll bring you all a comparison of where we were this time last year with the fuel costs that we've had this year. So it is making a difference on our transportation budget, the dollars that we save. The other item I want to uh, highlight is our services, our sanitation services with Rumpke. We went to bid with those services this time last year, and we are currently spending $1,391 a month, so we're on track to spend about $17,000 you remember this time last year we were on track to spend thirty seven to thirty nine thousand for the year. So the bid was very beneficial to us. So we will reevaluate with them um, and then let you know we have a recommendation to continue with that company. The other item that I wanted to talk about just real quickly because district activity funds are now in our accounting system on the invoice list, you all are seeing more school-related items. Field trips, it's that time of year, and I noticed several that went through on, on um, school field trips. And then several items associated with athletics, it could be tournament, entry fees, and things like that that we used to not see go through our bill packets because they were paid at the school level. Um, so if you see any of those kinds of items that you think are unusual and you have questions, just give me a call. And I don't have any other comments unless you all have any questions. Any questions on the financial report? We have a motion and a second to approve it as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next item is the payment of invoices. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the payment of invoices totaling $286,939.12 as presented. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second on the payment of invoices. Anything of note there, Ms. Campbell? Just if you have any questions about the particular items. Okay. Any questions now? Mm -hmm. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the payment of invoices. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thanks, Ms. Campbell. Yes, sir. Uh, next item on the agenda is the uh, approval of positions. Is there a motion? Motion that we approve the 2015 16 certified and classified positions as submitted. Second. Second. Um, any explanation? I'll 
I'll just share the, the positions you have before you make up the, the biggest part of um, our staffing for next year. There are some positions that have not been defined. Uh, School-based councils because of funding and some district level positions also funding uh, that will be playing with the board in future meetings. But the largest number of positions you have to fill in. And this is the same list we saw Monday, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, there was one change the high school council met and they allocated some positions that we did not have last Monday. So that's been updated on tonight's list. Okay. Um, any questions on that list? All right, we have a motion to approve the certified and classified positions that submitted on November 29th. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thanks, Mr. Schultz. Uh, next item is the consent agenda. Is there a motion? I move we accept the consent agenda as submitted. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor of approving the consent agenda as submitted, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is um, Dr. Luke's presentation of evidence um, related to the district's development and standards and indicators. Thank you. 